Good morning, Mr. Ripko. So I had to actually go back in. This is about, oh, it's about 24 hours now. I had to go back in and check some numbers. I was getting some chatter from the lower Mainspring Arbor port and it was really causing me trouble. So I had to go back in and really, really work it. So let's look at the thing. Okay, and here we are dial up. Uh, if you hear a bunch of noise in the background, the local elementary school is having their field day and they're blasting music. So that kind of just kicked in. So again, this is about maybe like 20 hours down. Okay. And there she is in all his or her glory. Yeah, people just, you know, they don't they don't know what they're missing. They really don't with these. They're gonna these things are cool and they're gonna come into their own. I swear they're gonna come into their own. They're just waiting biggest tragedy about these is that they're hard to find with the original bracelet. It's awesome that you still got yours. Oh, I know what I was going to show you. So I own a, I own a 69 MGB GT and the original owner, these aren't original, but the original owner thought that it would be neat to put on these extra special window cranks lightened for Leighton for racing. Anyway, it's the rally style of look. And of course, a lot of these rally style race cars had this kind of lightened thing going on. So it was kind of like, I'm racing. Look at me, I'm a racer. And that's where it is. Yeah, this is like some aftermarket stuff. I don't know, my MG sat in the woods for like 36 years. And uh, it's been probably three or four years, maybe five since I've owned it which means these have to date no later than the early 80s. The same dude who put these in was probably the same guy who painted racing stripes on the side by hand, I might add. Anyway, there it is. I'm so happy to have been able to do this for you. Look at how clean I was able to get that bracelet. Look at that. There was, do you remember how much grot was in there? That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. I'm so pleased and proud of that. Clean. Nothing but clean. Honestly, the biggest challenge was the crystal. The crystals for these are well, not impossible to come by, but they're a lot harder to come by than you'd think. That's a cool watch. That's a cool watch. I'm so glad that you brought it in. I'm so glad to see that uh, I can't wait for you to be, you know, rocking this thing. So everything's good. I set this to a normal, I set this to a, a normal reset. So you can feel the pressure to do each of those actions is the same. And that's what you got to do. So that is set up correctly for you. If you ever feel that the, the pressure needed to actuate these changes, like one starts getting real stiff versus the other, let me know. But I mean, you're a 6139 owner. You know what you're talking about. I'm giving you information you do that is surplus to requirements. I'm so inspired. I might finally service my own. I suppose I might as well show it. I hope you don't mind. Uh, there it is. Here's mine. The, mine was the Australian version. It's got the other bracelet. This is the Stellux bracelet. That's kind of silly to say because they're both Stellux. They're both made by Stellux. It's just the layout for this one. I actually prefer because it's got those open. 
those open bracelet that holds it makes the whole thing look lighter. I think in terms of aesthetics, it's certainly, I think the superior design. This one's cool, but the fact that the holes are in here, it makes it look, I don't know, really imposing. It pushes that uh, bracelet watch concept right to the edge. Whereas this, it just looks like you've got a cool lightweight strap. Seriously, I think that's the better visual design. But anyway, I should redo mine. Cool. Well, I cannot wait to get this back to you. And I appreciate your business so much. And I wish you the best. Thank you.